What is going on everybody? This is Yes I Read That and today I am reviewing Blood of Elves by Andrzej Zabkowski. Blood of Elves is the first real novel about the Witcher. Unlike the previous books about the Witcher, this is not a short story collection but it has a continuous story and it's a novel. So yes, finally. And uh, if you haven't watched my review of The Last Wish, then I would recommend you to check that out because that's the first Witcher book and I would highly recommend reading that before. So without further ado, let's talk a bit about the story and then about my likes and dislikes about the books before I give you my score. In the beginning of the story of this book, we know that Geralt the Witcher hasn't been seen for over a year. The last thing that we know is in the previous book, right at the end, he picked up Ciri from some farmers and he decided to take her in and care for her. So we know that he's probably somewhere with Ciri, but we don't know where or what he's doing. And it turns out that he's actually at Kaer Morhen, which is the Witcher's Keep, where Witchers are trained and uh, get these potions where they start to mutate and get their powers. He is there with Ciri and with some other Witchers who train Ciri to become a fighter, although they don't give her any potions. They have a problem though, because the Witchers don't know how to handle Ciri, because she is not a normal girl, she is a magician, she has these obvious magical powers, but she can't control them and they just randomly start to activate, I guess. So because of these obvious magical powers, the Witchers decide to get help from a magician, and that magician in this case is Triss Marigold. Now Triss has a backstory with Geralt as well that I don't really want to get into, but she visits the keep. So when Triss Marigold arrives, she confirms that Ciri has some magical power and that she is also too weak to handle them. And she also tells them something else, that at the same time, a lot of people are out to get Ciri, because she is a princess of the kingdom of Sintra. Ciri is believed to have died in Sintra when Sintra was besieged and eventually overrun by the Nilfgaardians who attacked Sintra, but somehow she escaped, she doesn't even know how herself, so a lot of people are looking for her, for the princess of Sintra who is the legitimate heir to the kingdom. So eventually Geralt and Triss decide to hide Ciri in the monastery we know from book one, from The Last Wish, so that nobody can find her and so that she is relatively safe. And they also decide to get help from Yennefer, who we also know from the previous books. And we also know her backstory with Geralt, with Geralt really being in love with Yennefer and Yennefer kind of returning it, but not really. So yeah, the story of the book is pretty interesting, but it's also very different from what the previous books offered, especially what The Last Wish was. And at the same time in this book, we get a lot more world politics. Uh, we get an introduction to a lot of the kings and to some important magicians, to some other witchers. We get to know about the battle against the Nilf Guardians a bit more. And there's one more thing that I haven't mentioned, and that is another war kind of brewing, which is the elves hiding in the forest. They formed a group called the Skoyatau, and these elves are pretty much out for humans. So they started to form this rebellion against the humans and some other non-humans joined in, some other non-humans opposed it. Humans can't really know who to trust and who's on the side of the enemy. So it's a really hard situation for everybody involved. And that's, that's the other thing brewing in the world politics right there. In general, there's a lot more political intrigue and a lot more dialogues taking place. So it's not as action-packed as the first books. So let me talk about my likes and dislikes for this book. So my likes about this book, the first thing I want to include is the continuous story we get. And I've been saying this for the last two reviews. I really like the short story concept, but I would have wished for a continuous story. And in this book, I think it's really cool. I, I liked it, yeah, it's, it's awesome. I also enjoyed the different locations we get to know here. There is Kaer Morhen, The Witcher's Keep, we get to know a bit more about the kings, we get to know the monastery a bit more, and basically, I guess we get to know the world map a bit better. 
Now the pacing of the book was very different from The Last Wish and I enjoyed it, but I guess it was more like a relaxing read and I really enjoyed it, but it's just different. So yeah, maybe it's not really your thing. The next thing is that Ciri's character is a lot more established. I enjoyed her a lot in the last book. I think I said that before. She's really cute and I really like that we got to see more of her. I think the dynamic between Geralt and Ciri is awesome and that's honestly one of the best things in the book in my opinion. Now obviously the world building is something I really enjoy. I just love world building in books. So obviously all the kings and the Nilfgaardians, the Skoyatal, that all really was awesome in my opinion. And the last thing is that the writing is still good, although I don't think it's spectacular or it really shines as much as in The Last Wish, so yeah. So what did I dislike about the book? So first of all I think the Geralt from The Last Wish is kind of missing. I mean, The Last Wish was so action-packed and he was basically a witcher hunting monsters and getting to know all kinds of different people and being in very different situations and that's just lacking in the last book and in this book and I really miss it. There isn't a lot of action, there isn't a lot of monster slaying. I think there was one monster in this book and that's it. So yeah, it's very different from The Last Wish and I really like The Last Wish so that's kind of sad. I feel like The Last Wish was just very exciting and fast paced but it also managed to make this world seem so vibrant and so alive and that's just missing in this book so I feel like The Last Wish was more exciting but yeah. My overall score for the book is a 7 out of 10. I still think it's a solid book, it's a good read but it doesn't match The Last Wish unfortunately. I just hope that the story picks up pace again in the next books and overall I would still recommend this to anybody who enjoyed the previous Witcher books because it's not a bad book by any means. It's good, it's just missing this one extra kick that I had in The Last Wish and I hope that can come back in the next books and yeah. But still, I really enjoyed that it's not a short story collection anymore and I like the book quite a lot. I would still recommend you to read the book as I said. So if you read the book, let me know what you think about it in the comments below. If you liked the review, make sure to drop a like and maybe sub to this channel and I'll see you in the next video. Till then, bye!